the average outboard engine dies before 2,000 hours. But right now, commercial charter captains are running Yamaha and Mercury motors past 3,500 hours without major repairs. The difference is not luck or light use. It is seven specific maintenance tricks that dealerships rarely mention and most weekend boaters never learn. These are not expensive modifications. They are simple habits that prevent the $15,000 failures happening to thousands of outboard owners every season. Why do the same catastrophic problems keep destroying engines? And what are the hidden weak points that claim most motors before they hit half their potential? Stay with me, because what you discover next could triple your engine's life and save you the cost of a brand new boat. Here is what most people do not understand about modern outboards. These are not the simple two-stroke motors from the 1980s. Today's four-stroke engines carry fuel injection, computer modules, and emission controls. They are engineered to run 3,000 hours or more, but achieving that requires seven critical steps that separate survivors from scrap metal. This is where I lose half the audience, but it's the truth. Your owner's manual says 100 hours between oil changes. I'm telling you 50 hours for the first 500 hours, then every 75 hours after that. Why the difference? Because manufacturer intervals assume perfect conditions. They do not account for short trips, saltwater spray, or ethanol fuel contamination. I have seen teardowns of engines with sludge buildup at 900 hours. Every single one followed the 100-hour interval religiously. Modern four-stroke outboards run hotter and tighter than older designs, and oil breaks down faster, especially with direct fuel injection creating higher combustion temperatures. Here is the reality. A 50-hour oil change costs you $60 for synthetic oil and a filter. Compare that to an $18,000 Powerhead rebuild. Always use full synthetic oil and stick with the viscosity your manufacturer recommends. 20W50 works for most applications, 10W30 for colder climates. And here is the critical part most people miss. Always change the oil filter too. I have seen boaters reuse filters to save $12 that contaminated filter sends metal particles and carbon right back through your engine. Fresh oil with a dirty filter is like drinking filtered water through a dirty sock. This one sounds extreme, but it is what commercial operators do religiously. Fogging oil creates a protective coating inside cylinders, on valves, and throughout the combustion chamber. It prevents corrosion during the hours or days between uses. Salt water environments are brutal Moisture gets into everything. Even fresh water creates condensation during temperature swings. That moisture sits on bare metal and starts corrosion immediately. Here is the process. After your last run of the day, spray fogging oil into the air intake while the engine idles. Let it smoke for 30 seconds, then shut down. The oil coats every internal surface. Cost is $5 per use and it takes about six minutes of your time. I have pulled apart engines that were fogged diligently. At 2,000 hours, the cylinder walls still showed crosshatch honing marks. Compare that to engines that were not fogged, where corrosion pitting starts by 500 hours. Those pits create hot spots that lead to detonation and eventual piston failure. Charter captains in saltwater know this trick prevents 90% of internal corrosion problems. It is the simplest insurance policy you will ever buy. Ethanol fuel is destroying outboards faster than any other factor. Ethanol absorbs, moist absorbs moisture from humid air. That moisture separates in your tank and, set in scene and settles into the fuel system. Water and ethanol and aluminum components lead to catastrophic corrosion. I have seen fuel rails completely eaten through at 800 hours. The fix is simple. Replace your fuel water separator filter every 200 hours, not the 500 hours your manual suggests. Use only marine grade filters with a 10 micron rating. Add a fuel stabilizer with ethanol treatment to every single tank. 
not just for storage. Every tank, every time. Here is what separates 3,000 hour engines from failures. Clean fuel. The high pressure fuel pumps in modern outboards operate at 2,000 pounds per square inch or more. A single water droplet passing through creates cavitation that damages pump components. That pump costs $2,500 to replace. But here is the secret step. Every 200 hours, remove your vapor separator tank and clean it manually. This component traps water and debris before it reaches the injectors. Most people never touch it until the engine will not start. By then, corrosion has already begun inside injectors that cost $400 each. Your owner's manual says annually or every 300 hours. That's a gamble with your entire power head. The impeller is a $50 rubber component that pumps cooling water through your engine. When it fails, your engine overheats in under three minutes. Aluminum cylinder heads warp at high temperatures. Warped heads mean a minimum $8,000 repair. I replace impellers every 100 hours, regardless of appearance. Rubber deteriorates from heat cycles and chemical exposure. An impeller might look fine, but have micro cracks that fail without warning. Here is what commercial operators know. They carry spare impellers on board and swap them at sea if needed. The job takes 20 minutes with basic tools. But here's the advanced trick within the trick. When you replace the impeller, also replace the cam and faceplate. These wear together. A new impeller on worn components reduces pumping efficiency by 30%. You are still at risk for overheating even with fresh rubber. The complete kit costs $80 and guarantees full cooling capacity for another 100 hours. Gear oil is the lifeblood of your lower unit. It lubricates gears that spin at thousands of revolutions per minute under incredible load. Most people change it twice each season. That is not enough. I recommend every 50 hours, especially for the first 300 hours, brand new lower units shed metal particles during break-in. That metal circulates in the gear oil, acting like a grinding compound on precision surfaces. After break-in, maintain 50-hour intervals if you run in shallow water, hit submerged objects, or operate in sandy conditions. Extend to 100 hours only if you run exclusively in deep, clean water. Here is the inspection trick that matters. When you drain lower unit oil, catch it in a clear container. Look for three warning signs. Milky color, which means water intrusion through failed seals. Metallic sparkles, which indicate gear wear or bearing failure. Dark black color, which shows overheating from low oil level. Catch any of these early and you are looking at a $500 seal replacement. Miss them and you will be buying a complete lower unit for $4,000. Always refill with manufacturer specified gear oil. Aftermarket alternatives might save $10, but they lack the specific additives your lower unit needs. This one surprises people because thermostats seem bulletproof, but they are not. Modern outboards use dual thermostats for precise temperature control. When one sticks closed, your engine overheats. When one sticks open, your engine runs cold and builds carbon deposits. Either scenario leads to expensive damage. The problem is that thermostats fail gradually. Your engine might run slightly hotter or cooler for months before you notice, and by then, damage is accumulating. Remove and inspect thermostats every 300 hours. Drop them in boiling water and verify they open fully. Look for corrosion, debris, or weak springs. New thermostats cost $40 for the pair. A warped cylinder head from overheating costs $10,000 to repair. When you reinstall thermostats, use new gaskets and apply a thin coat of marine sealant. Most overheating problems are not failed thermostats. They are air leaks around old gaskets that prevent proper coolant flow. This 15-minute check prevents 90% of overheating failures. This sounds too simple to matter, but it is critical. Most boaters run at one speed. 
They cruise at a constant RPM for hours, then idle back to the dock. This constant RPM operation creates carbon buildup on valves and pistons. Modern direct injection engines are especially prone to this. Fuel sprays directly into the cylinders without washing the intake valves clean. Carbon accumulates on valve stems and on piston tops. That carbon creates hot spots that cause pre-ignition and detonation. Here is what 3,000-hour engines have in common. Their operators vary engine speed throughout every trip. They cruise at 4,000 RPM for a while, then punch it to 5,500 RPM for two minutes, then drop back to 3,500 RPM and accelerate again. That variation in RPM changes cylinder pressures and temperatures, preventing carbon from building up in one location. It also cycles oil through different parts of the engine, ensuring complete lubrication. Every third trip, run your engine at wide open throttle for five full minutes. This Italian tune-up burns off carbon deposits and clears out the exhaust system. Outboards are designed to run at full power. Babying them actually causes more problems, problems than hard use. Do this in safe, open water. Do not skip it. Those five-minute wide-open throttle runs extend engine life by hundreds of hours. Here's the truth about outboard longevity. The engines that make 3,000 hours are not lucky. They are maintained by owners who understand seven simple principles. Change oil twice as often as the manual suggests. Fog the engine after every use. Keep fuel systems immaculately clean. Replace impellers before they fail. Service lower units frequently. Inspect thermostats regularly. Run your engine through its full RPM range. These seven tricks add maybe three hours of maintenance per season. Total cost around $400 annually in fluids and filters. Compare that to the $15,000 to $25,000 you will spend replacing a failed engine. Charter captains and commercial operators already know this. They depend on their engines for their livelihood. Now you know it too. Your outboard is engineered to last 3,000 hours or more. Give it these seven things and it will outlast your boat payment by a decade. Skip them and you will be shopping for a repower before you hit 1,500 hours.